Hi. In this portion of the video, we're going to talk about the basics. Patient setup and cuff selection and cuff application. Right now, you'll notice that my patient is completely supine on the table. A lot of labs have the backrest angled at a 45 degree angle. That is going to skew your results negatively. The patient must be supine with a support for the head, about six inches tall. Now, if the patient for some reason has back problems or breathing issues, elevate the head of the bed as little as possible to ensure the patient comfort while you do your examination. The other thing that's important is the bed height. Uh, this is not exactly a good height for me right here, so I'm gonna raise the bed up a little bit. Ergonomics is extremely important if you wanna to continue to perform the exams for many years. Also, you'll notice that my patient is covered up. The exam room I'm in right now is on the cold side, and we're going to be trying to measure the patient's extremities. And if we leave him uncovered for too long, he's going to vasoconstrict, which is going to skew again our results. So I've got him covered up right now while I'm talking through the basics. And so the other thing to keep in mind is when you're doing work on the toes especially, if you're taking toe waveforms or toe pressures, any cold exposed toes are going to give you a reading that's going to be erroneous. So check your exam room temperature before you begin. I'm going to talk now about cuff selection. We have a wide variety of cuffs that we offer with our instruments, starting with the large 17 centimeter cuff. Some people like to use this one at the thigh level, with just one cuff at the thigh and what's called the three cuff method. The next size we have is an SC12L. This is an extra long cuff to go around large thighs. It is 12 centimeters wide, but long enough to go around a large limb. Next up, we have the 12 centimeter cuff. The 12 centimeter cuffs are commonly going to be used above the knee and at the high thigh site if you're doing a four cuff study. Now, if you are going to be doing a four cuff study, make sure there's enough room that you can get two cuffs above the knee without them overlapping in the middle. If they overlap, or over the kneecap, consider using one cuff at mid-thigh. Next, we're going to be looking at the calf area. We typically will use a 10 centimeter calf cuff, and that, that is 10 centimeters wide, and we'll usually use that again at the ankle. Some people like to do a transmetatarsal PBR waveform, and for that application, we have a 7 centimeter cuff that goes right around the midfoot. And last but not least, we have our digit cuffs. This one is a PC 2.5 cuff that goes around the large toe. Now, in cases where you have patients with very small toes, sometimes this is going to be too large. There might not be enough toe sticking out to attach your PPG sensor to, so there is a DC 1.9 cuff that is available. Now I'm going to talk about placing the cuffs themselves, do's and don'ts. Starting with the arms, you want to make sure when you're putting your arm cuff on, that the cuff is up above this crease comfortably, and the hose position is extremely important. Typically, we're going to be taking our Doppler measurement from the brachial artery, and so if you position the hose so that it's sear, you're going to be fighting with it with your Doppler probe. So I like to position the cuff inlet hose externally, leaving myself plenty of room to the crease in the arm. Next, we're going to move to the ankle site. The ankle site is going to be positioned about an inch and a half above the ankle. Sometimes you're going to need to have a little space above the ankle to reach the posterior tibial artery. And again, cuff hose inlet placement is very important. If you have the cuff position here, it's going to interfere with finding his dorsalis pedis vessel. And if you have it tucked in near his medial malleolus, you're going to be fighting with it with your Doppler probe trying to get his posterior tibial. So again, I like to rotate these externally and then make sure you apply them snugly. And another nice technique you can use if you're struggling is to have the patient bend their knee, balance with their foot. Again, the patient is not helping. A consideration to consider when applying the calf cuff is you want this cuff to be over the maximum circumference of the calf muscle. And so don't put it right below the knee here or don't put it at the mid. To be on this bone here. 
And again, apply snugly. The rule of thumb when applying your pressure cuffs is you should be able to get one finger in the cuff from the top. You don't want to over tighten them. Now when you're placing the cuffs above the knee, again if you're using the four cuff method and using the SC12 cuffs, make sure again that you have room for a space in between both of these cuffs. You pretty much can place these cuffs anywhere. You've got a lot of fleshy tissue here. The inlet hose will not pinch the patient. Hi. In this portion of our video, we're going to be talking about the vascular basics, patient positioning, room temperature, and comfort for the operator. As we see right here, my patient is being covered by a blanket. He has no cuffs on, and I want him to stay warm before we begin our examination. The other thing to think about is the bed height. As a taller person, this is not an ideal height for me to perform a study on this patient, so I'm going to raise this bed up. Little things like this make a big difference in your final results. Next thing we're going to talk about is cuff sizing. Right now, starting at the largest cuff we have is a CC17 cuff. Some people use this as a single cuff above the knee in what we call a three cuff method. A lot of people use an SC12 cuff for a four cuff method, placing one at the high thigh level and one at the above knee level. If you are going to perform the four cuff method, make sure you can apply two SC12 cuffs with a space in between them and make sure the lower one is not covering the patella. The ankle and the arms. Remember, there is a 120% ratio that you want to maintain for accurate cuff pressures. So if I have a patient with a rather large thigh or a rather large arm, I may elect to put a 12 centimeter cuff on that calf or on that arm. So keep that in mind when you're selecting cuffs to put on your patient. Some people like to do a transmetatarsal PVR wave tracing. A seven centimeter TM cuff is what we use by placing this around the midfoot. For toes, we see 1.9 cuff. If the patient has small toes, Try thinking about using the 1.9. It will expose more of the toe after it's wrapped to affix your PPG sensor too. Now there's some cuffs do's and don'ts that I'm going to explain next. And the way you put on the cuff is very important to the overall accuracy and speed of your examination. I'm going to talk about arm cuff placement right now. You want the patient's hand to be open with the palm forward. And you're going to be thinking about the area where the brachial artery is. You want to make sure that you place the cuff high up enough so that you have easy access to that crease in the arm. Secondly, you want to make sure the inlet hose for the tube on the cuff is not protruding into the area where we're going to be looking with our Doppler probe to find that brachial artery. Next, we're going to talk about ankle cuff placement. Again, very important. We have a couple of points that we're going to be looking at on the foot with our Doppler probe to take our pressures. The first site is the dorsalis pedis region at the top of the midfoot. So you do not want to place your cuff here where you're going to be fighting with that inlet hose. Same thing with the posterior tibial artery. Make sure that this inlet hose is not in that area near the medial malleolus. And thirdly, make sure the cuff itself is about an inch above the medial malleolus. Sometimes you'll need a little bit of that room going up to find that vessel and have it be strong. Now cuff. Uh, it's going to give you what's called artifact. If you're doing a PVR waveform, it's going to artificially reduce the amplitude of that waveform, possibly simulating disease. So when you're putting the cuffs on the legs, make sure the cuffs are very snug. You can also get some help. If you need some, have the patient hold their foot with their knee up like that. Make sure you get a nice snug fit and the cuff wrap should be nice and clean like this. Next up is the calf. Calf wrapping is very important as well. I've seen a lot of techs put this cuff right up under the knee like that. What you want is you want to put it at the largest circumference of that calf muscle. 
So place this here and also think about the inlet hose. If you have this over the shin bone, it's going to be very painful to the patient when you get those pressures up around 180. So again, apply snugly and cleanly. The rule of thumb is you should be able to slip one finger in from the top. Since the legs are tapered, don't worry about how many fingers you can get in from the bottom. Again, the placement of the hose is above the knee at the high thigh. The hose placement is not really critical because mostly fleshy tissue in those places. And I'll end up by talking about Unetics cuffs in general. None of the sizes I've detailed have any latex in them at all. In this portion of the video, we're going to be showing how to perform a segmental pressure study with PVR waveforms. PVR stands for Pulse Volume Recording. To begin